College tennis fans, welcome to this episode of College Tennis Talk. We are joined by Cedric Kaufman, head men's tennis coach, University of Kentucky. Cedric is in his eighth season as a head coach for the Wildcats, uh, 15 years total, seven as an assistant. Cedric, we want to thank you for spending the time with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is, um, this is the highlight of my day today, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. It, it's been a while. Last time we saw each other, we were in a workout room a year or two ago. Uh, so I'm glad I'm talking to you now. Yeah, I think we were out in uh, at the Malibu Oracle Classic. That's right. That's right. A beautiful place. All right. Well, anyway, again, thanks for joining us. Cedric, we're, we're, we're talking about the last time we saw each other. I'm going to go back even further. Uh, I don't know if you'll remember this. Um, I think we're about 16, 17 years old. We're down in uh, Central America playing some futures events. You traveled down with uh, a group from the Voltaire Academy, ING, um, and, and, and I was down with uh, some buddies of mine playing some futures. We were actually sitting poolside uh, one evening, and, and, and I don't know how we got on this topic, but, but you shared your, your vision that, uh, again, we're, we're getting ready to go off to college, but you share your vision that, that, uh, that one day you're going to be playing all the major Grand Slams in professional tennis. Um, it was a very bold statement. I didn't have the confidence you had back then, not, not even close. Uh, and, you know, we, we go off to school and, and, and sure enough, uh, you, you made the, those dreams come true. Um, can, can you provide a little insight into, into that confidence you had? And then and not only just the confidence, but, but the work you put in, because clearly you weren't ready at that age to, to be a Grand Slam player, um, but you went to University of Kentucky trained four years, developed, and, and then turned yourself into to one of the, you know, uh, professional level players. Yeah, I, I don't recall that exact conversation, but uh, some of my friends re remind me that I was pretty bold about my statements. Um, I, think, I think it's the only thing I had. I think that's the only thing that I wanted to do. Um, and I was going to do whatever it took to, to get to that. Um, and I kind of did it halfway. I didn't achieve all my goal. You know, I played the Grand Slams, all qualities made two. So I, uh, in the main draw. So I, I still missed two in the main with Wimbledon and, uh, which I lost last round of qualities and Australian, but, um, I had a wonderful career and I really enjoyed it. But going back to my decision to go into college and all that stuff, I think I wasn't ready. You know, I, I wasn't ready. I think a lot of things in my game were not very good. My serves, my, uh, my volleys, a lot of things needed to work on. Red Amy, who you know from, from Volatari's, told me, said, you're just not ready. You need to go to college. Uh, and you might have a small chance after college if you keep working hard and things like that. So um, I ended up making a great decision coming to Kentucky. Um, not a lot of people recruited me. It was either between South Florida and, and, and Kentucky. And I visited Kentucky, and I thought this was the place for me. So, but uh, another story I recall, I think we, you and me battled really uh, in a lot of matches and, and uh, you know, anywhere and everywhere. I thought Florida was a wonderful place to grow up and compete. Uh, and um, I think you and me were about the same level. We just said, you know, keep working hard and, and see what happened. Well, I, I do have um, a lot of memories <laughs> of, of those matches that, that we had and, and more times than not, you came out on top. But, uh, but again, it's a great point. I mean, we, we were very even in, in level, just, just as so many of our peers back then. But, but it was that confidence and that desire and, uh, and belief that, that, that you had going forward that, that ultimately, and that's what separates athletes. And, and, and you clearly had that. And I, I was always impressed and, and caught off guard by, by that, that statement you made. But then years down the line, always remembered and reflected to that. Yeah, I just, I, trust me, I had a lot of doubts. Not, not, I think, um, and I think a lot of athletes do too. Uh, and I tell my players that, you know, um, serving for a big match at 5-4, yeah, you are going to get nervous. You know, and, and, and it's good. That means you care. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I think when I, I thought about those big moments and I remember my parents saying, listen, you've got two arms, two legs, you know, and, and nobody is way above the other. Um, you still have a chance, even though it's going to be very difficult. But trust me, I, I still had uh, doubts. I still had a lot of weaknesses. Uh, but that's truly what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to be out there. And each, uh, I remember, floor, I mean, each step of the way, I had difficulties. You know, uh, playing Paul Goldstein in the juniors was a nightmare for me. 
Uh, you know, I got a lot of players who whoop me in the juniors and a lot of players whoop me in college and a lot of players whoop me in the pros. Uh, you just have to make small adjustment and keep putting your head down and don't get discouraged. But trust me, I was confident, but a lot of the time it was more of a front than, than not. Well, a front or not, you, you definitely <laughs> backed it up. Um, <laughs> Hey, so, so going back to, to that, 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 that trip down in Central America, we're going to spend too much time there, but, but Andre Saul was down there with us. And I don't know if you remember, that was the time we all shaved his head with a, with a big razor. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember this. You know, Andre is, is my best friend, one of my best friends in tennis and, and in life. I wish he was not, you know, traveling and in Brazil where I can see him more, but I see him once or twice at the, at the big tournaments. Um, and I, I still remember this. This is, this is what the tour is great, is making memories with our friends. And we still have those friendships with you and Andre Sa. And I, I still remember, yes, we did shave his head. And um, he, uh, I don't know if he would do that today, but uh, he did that back then. <laughs> yeah, so I want to get back to, to you and your confidence and, 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 and take that into your recruitment of players. Uh, you, you, know, you mentioned you know, talking to your players, it, it's, it's okay to be nervous. It, it, it shows that you care. When you're going through your recruitment and then when you get your guys on campus, how much are, are you, you know, talking about the, the confidence and the belief and, and the boldness that, that you displayed as a player and that you're trying to get out of your players? Yeah, I think we, at the beginning of my coaching career, you know, was the, it was close to the end of my career. I thought guy, guys would have confidence all the time, and they don't. You have to manage that through, through each week, through each month. Um, we do talk, I think the most difficult thing to do on the recruiting trail to get the people that you want is you say, what do you want to do with your tennis or, or with your school? And I would say, same with you and a lot of coaches, a lot of them say, I want to play professional. And 95% say that, at least the people that, that, that I recruit. But out of that 95%, truly 5% really want to do it. I think just saying it is easy, but doing the things that you need to do to be a mature tennis player, to, to do the things off the court that demands you know, to be a top 20 college player and have a chance after. Those are sacrifices. Those are tough decisions. Uh, and, you know, I, I'd be the first one to tell you I've messed up on that. I thought some kids were, you know, more driven or, or things like this. At the end of the day, you just want somebody that loves to train, that loves to play tennis, that talks about tennis, that, that watches tennis, uh, that doesn't fake it. You know, I want to know how you are on your worst days. You know, if you are having a worst day, do you want to practice? Do you want to train and things like that? And I think for a couple of years, um, as a head coach for two years, I messed up on that. I, I made some mistakes on the recruiting trail and I thought those guys, you know, and I love them. I still love them. Those are my people. But uh, you could see towards the junior, senior, they had other ideas, not the professional tour. You know, they had other, you know, I want to go into work and stuff like that. So you, those are, but confident level is, is so important because if you're confident um, that you can do something at the end of the day, you're going to keep working hard at it. So I, I try to tell them that my guys have, a, as you know, um, if they like 5% of talent compared to maybe the Florida of the world or the Georgia, that 5% gap, we can catch up uh, as much as, you know, we, but you got to do it on Saturday afternoons, on Sunday when I'm not looking. Um, those are the sacrifices you got to do to, to, to catch up to those guys and, and, and have a career in our sport. You know, you, you talked about seniors, and oftentimes seniors really are the hardest ones to, to coach. Um, mm -hmm. They are starting to look for that, that next step, and, and if they don't see the, the pro tour and, and you know, and, and, and their future, you know, they're, they're focusing on their, their professional job off the tennis court. Um, you know, you, you said you, you, you kind of learned from those first few years as a head coach. Yes, uh, I did. Addressing your seniors, because not all of them still that senior year are, are you know, truly believe they're going to be professional tennis players. Yes. How have you learned to, to manage and, and motivate and, and keep your se seniors uh, leading your team? Um, I think we've done a, a better, a, a good job at this with um, – our seniors, I think that the sale on, on them coming back and is leaving behind something better, you know, than what they started. So if they're not looking for the professional tour, um, I always tell them, you know, you, let's become a leader. This is the year where you actually finish your growth as a human being and you give something back. And giving back is showing the freshmen how to handle this college stuff. Uh, it is a tough week um, to be consistent at working hard every day. 
Um, so we just look at telling him, listen, we want you to be a leader. You need to, to, to mold those freshmen, you know, faster than somebody molded you when you were a freshman. Uh, we focus on that. And also, you know, we, we, we talk about, listen, how do you want to finish your senior year? You know, do you want to lose first round of NCAAs? Do you want to lose second? You know, let, let's leave a mark. Let's, let's put your name on a board on something that, you, you know, special. And I think when they look at that, they become better teammates. They don't look at the professional tour, so say. You know, they're, 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 we're helping them with internship or, or helping them decide what they want to do. But we really talk every week about them helping our freshmen, our sophomores, how they're going to leave the program behind just a little bit better than they found it. And, and that way, I think it, it's, it helps them work hard uh, or, you know, as hard as they did when they were coming in. But then again, you know, I, I feel like uh, my, and you know me personally, um, I, if they don't work hard, they don't practice. You know, they, they're not going to be around me or, or I think uh, they don't have to be perfect every day, but they, they got to work hard. Otherwise, they don't play. You know, I, I love that message of, of having your seniors, you know, really try to, you know, and, and we anticipate them being leaders. And even as a, a freshman, we want to, to have some leadership role. But uh, but really trying to, to mold those freshmen, and as you said, it, you know, quicker or, or stronger or, you know, better than, than they were molded uh, when they were freshmen. And I think that's a great message. Um, and, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. And, and, and you know, when your struggles as a first time head coach and, and kind of learning and, and adapting and understanding that role of, of your seniors moving through your program. So, so thank you. No, no problem. I, I think something, uh, and it takes five, 10 minutes. It does, you know, it's us on a Friday afternoon, you know, uh, being done with, with workouts and sitting with one or, you know, uh, give you an example, Cesar Bourguiz was a senior this year. He's got his year back. Uh, and some people would, I saw a lot of transfers from, from seniors to other schools, other programs for whatever. And I was really happy that Cesar's coming back to us to play, but we would meet with him, you know, once a week for five minutes, once every two weeks and say, how are you doing? The first question is, how are you doing? How are you feeling? But I'd say 80% of the conversation say, how's your team doing? You know, how, how, how are the young ones doing? You know, what are you guys going to do this weekend? Uh, um, uh, is anybody hitting extra? And I think when you have conversations with this, now the, the kid's got to care. You know, he's got to be a good person. But I, I feel like we have good people on our team. Um, and he just tells us. He just says, listen, yeah, we're going to come back, play some doubles, or, you know, we're going to go to dinner together. Um, um, now, was, was he your captain last year, or is, was this just a conversation you're having with him because he, he's... I, I, yeah, he, he, he is our captain, but I think all seniors need to have conversations with, like, like this. He, yeah. he, they play or they don't play. I feel, um, and I'm sure with you too, I think we had people on our teams when we played that impacted the team that did not play. As much as people that play, they impact a lot of, of decision-making off the court. So we talked to, if I have a senior that's playing nine on my team, he, his impact on the ones that play or don't play or is as much as the one that play. Um, and if you respect your teammates, you're going to listen to the people that are seniors. I, I hope, I hope you do. And I think as a freshman, I would. Um, and I mean, uh, it, 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 it's hard to believe, but the best teams that, that I've coached as a head coach, and, and these are teams that have reached top 25 in the country advancing in an NCAA tournament. They were almost driven by guys that were not regularly contributing in the starting lineup. You know, the, the, the passion and the energy that they brought every single day to their teammates in pushing them were our seven, eight, nine guys. Um, and, and, and it's incredible that, that, that you can get so much, um, you know, uh, push and, and leadership from, from guys that aren't taking that active role, stepping on the court and, and, and picking up individual singles wins. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 they make such an impact. So I do, like I said, I, I do the best that I can treating those players as, as, you know, as much respect as, as my number one, truly, um, because they do have a lot of power um, um, with, you know, I, I think, and I go back to respect, we just got to make sure that when my nine tells my number one or two something that that's for their better, for the, to, to be better players, better people, my number one and two have the respect, like I said, don't disrespect, because they play one and two go, oh, you know, I do what I want. I play higher than you. I'm a better tennis player. And because I, the, 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 the difference between my nine and one and two is also not that much. Um, so I just, as long as we have respectful talks and relationships, uh, those, I'm telling you, those seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, and you know this, if you have a player that's seven, that's right behind that six guy and it's working so hard, but it's, 
is cheering for the team when we play, you know, and I pull my five out because he did not compete hard. I hope my five that's out also cheers. He needs to learn, man. That guy was, was really a good teammate. I'll cheer. I'll do the same thing for my team. Uh, this is not just all about me. Uh, and if, if you create that atmosphere, if you had a talent of 40 in the country, you're going to be 20 just because your team um, respects each other, works hard, is more consistent with their decision making on and off the court. And that, this is what um, this is what that's what we try to do. I think I made the NCAA once or twice, and I guarantee you our talent level was 70. Um, but you know, I think because we we do those small little things, they care about each other a little bit more, and we'll fight a little harder. Yeah, no, that's definitely so important. And and, and again, I'm 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 glad you're you're, you're sharing that message with us. Uh, you know, with, with, with your team. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about levels of college tennis and, and you play and, and compete as, as a player and now as a, a head coach uh, in one of the toughest conferences in the country, the SEC. Um, you know, where do you see that level when you were a player and, and where do you see that level now as a, as a head coach? Um, I think the talent the athletic ability of the players now are better than my era. I, I do. I, I think they're bigger. I think they're stronger. I think they're faster. Um, do they compete all the time like we did? I don't know. You know, uh, I think we scrapped a little bit more on our off days. When we had an off day, we would pick a, a fight maybe with the, you know, just kind of pick a fight with the player mentally and, and go after it. I see a little less of that, you know, like kind of like the Ohio State you know, I right, listen, we're going to kind of take you down. Um, I see a little less of that, but I think that the tennis can be better and they hit bigger and the rackets are, you know, I, I think the tennis has gotten better. Uh, and if you mentally can get a, a kid uh, that's consistent, that, that really with these emotions and go, listen, I'm just going to play each point as hard as I can and as smart as I can. Uh, I think, you know, you've got a top 50 college player, uh, but it's not easy to do that. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work off, off the court and a lot of conversations with, with the players. But um, I think the tennis is as, as strong as, as, as it was. And, and, and um, every decade, it gets better and harder and faster. Uh, we just have to – but I think the kids are different. You know, I, I think – I didn't play computer games or Fortnite, you know, all that stuff. I think we have to adjust to them a little bit, uh, which is tough for me because I am, I am stubborn and I don't like – big changes but uh, I have to like I told my assistant two days ago I said I've got, I've got to get on social media more you know I've got to I've got to 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 get into their life you know just a little bit more and um, I've got to you know live and learn I've got to adjust a little bit otherwise I'll you know become an old dinosaur. <laughs> well hey you are competitive and uh, you always have been and, and you talk about your, your team are, are you getting out and competing against these guys? No. The only time I would is I'll get them really tired for two hours and I'll play a volley volley game when they're exhausted, you know, or, uh, but I, I don't hit as much, but with uh, this quarantine thing, I am trying to get back in shape. I need to get back in shape and, and get on the court and, and, uh, um, and just enjoy myself on the tennis court. I did take a break for a decade. I didn't want to touch a racket. I coach, but not really want to hit, but I want to get back to, to just, feeling, you know, competing a little bit. So I am getting back in shape to, to get ready. Uh, but I can't, I can't play with those guys full court with the serve and return. But baseline game, I think I might be able to. All right. Have you shared stories of your touring career with, with your players? Yeah, a little bit. And they, they, a lot of times they ask questions or... or... I mean, because you, you had, you had a, 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 a memorable match against Pete Sampras in the French Open. Yes. And it's, I'd say that's for sure the question that I get asked the most, you know, by my players is, uh, how did it feel? How'd you play, you know, playing all this crowd, five, 6,000 people. Yeah, I do ask, I mean, you know, get asked some questions about this. Um, but, you know, I say, boys, this is, this might be. So in, in, in that, in that match to just kind of yeah. catch our, catch our viewers up. That was, that was a five setter. You had match points in that match to be one of the greatest players in the, in the history of the sport. Yeah, I had three, maybe two on the return, one on the serve. Um, I think I choked one, but the other two I, I, I played the right way. Um, um, again, I think one, and it's funny because we, one of the highlights of my career is that loss. Uh, it was French, you know, I'm originally from France, so I played in front of my family in France. I had to qualify 
Um, and I tell them, listen, you know, you take away your best five wins, you take away your worst five, and this is where you are. This is the player you are. So this is one of the highlights there. But I tell them about the grind. You know, getting get there was a lot harder than, than that match. And, and you talk about, you know, the joy of being able to play in front of your, your, your family and, and friends in France. Because you came to the U.S. at a young age to train and in Bradenton at the Voltaire Academy, now the, the ING facility. Um, yes. And then you stayed and, and went to college in the U.S. So you really didn't have that many opportunities to play in front of your family, or likewise, your family just didn't have that many opportunities to, to watch you play. And this is before, you know, live streaming cameras on, you know, on, on so many tennis courts and college facilities throughout the country. That's, that, that's right. My, my, parents, my parents would see me play in the summers two, three times you know, when I got back. Uh, I was so tight, you know, because they invested a lot in me and to go to Florida. So I didn't even play good, you know, when I, when I went back to Europe to play. Um, and to tell you the truth, my mom watched my quality matches at the French, but my dad was too nervous to watch. You know, so it, it, it just, he actually didn't even see the, the main match. He, he watched it on TV. And um, so, but yeah, it was, it was exciting for, for my mom, my, my brother, sister, and all, all that stuff. Yeah. No, I, I bet that, that, that was a, uh, an incredible day and experience for, for you to, to be able to share with your family. Uh, I, I wish, as we all do, maybe aside from, from Pete, that you would have been able to get one more point there. But uh, it's still one more point. to relive, relive that memory. And you had so many tennis fans across the world that you grew up with that, that were cheering for you. So uh, I enjoyed that day myself. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I want to get back to uh, your, your team and, and, you know, we kind of your competitiveness and kind of – touch a little bit on your coaching philosophy M moving forward with this with with your program and and, and your team what, what are the goals that you're you you've outset uh you know outlined for for not just having a a, a team uh but but really kind of strengthening your your program and and your legacy at kentucky um yeah i i I think I had a good first couple of years as a head coach. I think we had a good core of guys that after Coach Emery retired, um, you know, where it carried on for three, four years. And I think I got a little complacent recruiting. Um, and I'm a pretty good recruiter. I'm not a great recruiter. I, I just love the court. I just love to be on the court. And for two, three years, I felt like we would play the big teams and, with the talent we had on the court, we have one chance out of 10 to get those guys, you know, and it had to be a perfect day, you know, uh, maybe at home, maybe on the, you know, indoors or whatever it was. So I looked in the mirror and a lot of times we look at the players we have and we, we kind of take it, okay, that's their fault. I think it was my fault a little bit on, on the way. Um, like I said, I needed a recruit just a little bit better. And um, um, I think Kentucky is always, we work hard. I mean, I, I can tell you that we, we work, hard and I know everybody does I think the toughest thing we need to do as coaches is everybody works hard how consistent are you at working hard uh, how many days out of the week out of those six days you go out there are we consistent and I, I this is my goal is for us to whatever day it is I don't care if you're tired or not you're, you're going to give 110 percent and you're going to be coachable uh, and it's done well are the players that we get like I said it might not be like blue chips guys all the time but we are guys, like I said, my captain was a nobody. And, and like I said, on ranking, he was not recruited. Uh, and he's playing one doubles and three singles and beating the Georges at three and, and things like that. So the growth here at Kentucky, we focus on growth. And they do that well. I just needed a bigger maybe talent pool out of my guys first when they come in as freshmen. And I did get this in the last year or two. I think I have a very good class. Uh, the freshman class was this year. They, they learned a lot. And I think in the next couple of years, I think Kentucky can get back to, to where we belong in, in the top 10, uh, top five, uh, making sweet 16s and things like that. There's a lot of work ahead, but I love the boys that we have right now. No, I, I, can, I can hear it. And, and, it, and it sounds like you're, you're you know, as, as a player, you're able to, to kind of analyze and, and go back and, 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 and make corrections and, and you're trying to always improve and, and, and you're putting that message out where, you know, even as head coaches, you're still constantly doing that. How can I do things better? Where can I improve? You know, you talked about your first couple of years, some mistakes you might have made and, and you, you try to fix those and write those um, and you're continuing to do that throughout your, your coaching career. Yeah, I, and I look, like I said, after every year, I look at my players and, and, okay, this is what you need to work on. And it's the same. I look at myself and what do I need to do better? 
Um, I took my doubles and it, I don't think it was horrendous, but it was close to being horrendous. I was a good college doubles coach. Uh, could play doubles fine, uh, did pretty good in doubles, but I, I didn't relate the message of doubles really, really well. So, you know, and it's when you take in the summers or summer like this, where you just start reading books about people that are successful, sending a message in doubles. How do you teach doubles? How do you coach doubles? So I think I am getting better in the last year and a half because you know this, the doubles is a big deal, uh, actually in this short format and, and very tough to win four singles consistently on the road or, or at home. Uh, so I had to do that better. So I had to do my recruiting, you know, a little bit better. And I had to do uh, the doubles. The singles, I'm fine. I enjoy it. I see things pretty clearly on the, you know, when I'm coaching. Uh, but I needed it to be better in the doubles. Um, and, you know, I, I thought I got a good hire also in, in my assistant, Matthew Gordon. I think he's one of the best assistants in, in the country. Uh, you need to surround yourself also with people that, that believe, you know, that, that want to work hard, that believe in their players and they are willing to do anything for those boys. Um, you know, we've got a new volunteer coach. We're, that's not out yet. I got to keep it a little confidential, but I, I think we have very good coaches around those boys. So I'm, 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 I'm excited for them, you know, because I, I think our coaching staff is going to do whatever they, they, they need to be successful. But they've got to want it as much as I did or you did. So, look, I, I remember all those years back when we started this interview with, uh, with your bold statement of you're, you're going to play in all the Grand Slams. And, and, and now you're, you're, you're making – you know, uh, I don't want to say predictions, but, uh, but, but saying where you want your team to be, which is, you know, back in the top five, you want to be competing at, at the highest level of college tennis. So uh, I, yeah. you know, I, I'm hoping in a few years time, we'll, uh, we'll reflect back on this conversation and say, Hey man, do you remember that time you said, were you going to get Kentucky back into the top five in the country? Um, yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll save this. Uh, we'll save this interview for that. that moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll do the best that I can to get there, but we'll see. All right. Well, I, I know not to doubt you. I've got a lot of belief in you now, man. <laughs> so, Hey, you, you brought up Dennis Emery and, and, and he was your coach and uh, you were his assistant coach for, for a number of years. And, and he was at Kentucky, uh, you know, long, long, long time. Uh, tell me the impact he had on you, you know, not just as a player, as, as a coach, but, uh, but just as your development as, as, as a person and the impact he had on the University of Kentucky. Uh, a hum humongous impact on, on me, on a lot of players that played under him. Um, on, like you said, uh, as a person, he impacted me, as a player, he impacted me, and as a coach. Uh, the first that he tried to change with me is, was as a person. Uh, meaning, you know, the way I, I carried myself, um, you know, I got mad, you know, this one, when, when I didn't play well or lost matches, I got, you know, out of hand, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll fight the guy that, I, you know, just, it was just a little over the top. And he just said, listen, you can't be like this. So he taught me as a person, then he taught me as a player how to, okay, this is, I think what he did really well as a coach and what I try to focus on is we always focus on people's weaknesses. Okay, we've got to fix this. We've got to fix that for you to become a good player. At Kentucky, we work 10% on, on, on weaknesses, 15%. The, the rest of it is, is we work on strength, 85%. Uh, your strength is what's going to win matches. Um, so we, we fo I think he's taught me that. Uh, I've always been like that. I didn't work a lot. Like I said, my serve was terrible. I didn't work a lot on, on my serve. I worked on my fitness and hitting a lot of balls and stuff like that. But he taught me, this is how you manage that with a team. Let's focus on, okay, this guy's quick. This guy can do this with his forehand. We're going to work on him hitting forehands all over the tennis court. Uh, and he, 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 I think he did that very well. Another thing I'll tell you where the old guard did better than this new guard of coaches uh, and where I'm light years away from him, he's – thinking of, of ways of, of uh, to make the team better, yeah, but the schedule better, to make the fundraising better, to make uh, the whole program uh, be successful. Uh, he was very good also in networking, knew a lot of people, not afraid to talk. I'm not really good at that stuff. Um, he's, he, you know, shook hands. He'd go to the Orange Bowl and shook hands to a thousand people, you know, remember people's names. And he's a wonderful storyteller. Uh, I might get to that, but only when I'm 60, 65. I'm a long ways to go from that. I'm, I kind of keep to myself and, and, and do the job that I need to do. But I'm, I, I still have him in the background of my schedule. We are not afraid to play anybody. You do a hard schedule, even though it might hurt you with the 500 or miss the NCAA one or two years. 
Um, so he's taught me a lot, like you said, as a person, as a player, and as a coach. Well, he, he definitely, uh, you know, touched everybody that, uh, that he came in contact with. Uh, he's very, very personable. And, and, and as I said, it's impacted and, and left positive, uh, you know, memories for, for, for all of college tennis. And uh, you, you were lucky enough to be able to spend that much time with him. Yes, and a good thing I think that's coming out. I think a lot of coaches need to read his book. I think he's writing a book and finishing a book right now about, you know, his career and, and college and the players that he had around him. And I think it'd be, like I said, if, if you want to be better uh, and get in, in his head a little bit, I think it'd be a great book to, to read. So if it comes out, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, shoot it to you for you to tell everybody. No, I'll look forward to it. Uh, all right, Cedric, we're going to move on to uh, another segment of the show called Quick Volleys. All right, I'm so ready. I, got, I don't have good volleys, but I, I'm ready. Okay, yeah, we're going to be looking for uh, some, some quick replies here. Okay. All right, quick volleys. Starting a match, serve or return? Uh, I serve at the end of my career. No ad scoring, like or dislike? I like it. I don't like change, but I do like it. All right. Returning a no ad point, you going deuce or ad box? I'm going on the side where the server can't hurt me as much. Okay, gotcha. All right. <laughs> best venue in the SEC? Uh, Georgia. Georgia has the best venue we have. All right. Best venue in the country outside the SEC? Because I think Georgia, outside. you know, pretty much has one of the, the, the best in the country. So outside of the SEC, what do you think is the, the best venue? I really like the NCAAs at Stanford. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I thought it was pretty. I like UCLA, maybe not for college format, but just the stadium. So those two are, are special, I think, to, to me. Toughest place to play in the SEC? I think Georgia is with their crowds. I, I, I think in a big match, I think is the toughest place to play. Toughest place to play in the country, outside the SEC? Ohio State. Yeah, well, they definitely have the, uh, the record to, to back that up. <laughs> yeah, it's the toughest because we can't beat them there. <laughs> Nobody can. So, uh, you, so you, you, you're in a big group. All right, favorite tradition at Kentucky? Um, I don't know if we have a tradition, but I think the good thing we have is we keep in touch. So um, that's, all, that's all we need. All right. Most memorable athletic event outside of tennis – that uh, you've experienced at Kentucky? Uh, during my years in college, I went 94, 98. Basketball won two national championships in 96, 98. I think that's the most memorable and the most fun I had those nights uh, at, at Kentucky. <laughs> All right. Most memorable moment as a player. And, and we brought up the, uh, you know, the experience playing Pete Sampras at the French Open when you had match points. But let's focus on, uh, on a college memory. Yeah, and to tell you the truth, a lot of my most memorable are in college uh, because you share them with, I think, with other teammates. So I would say beating Stanford when they were one at national indoors. And I think it was a special team because I think they lost twice in two years. So Stanford at national indoors. All right. Most memorable moment as a coach. That could be as an assistant or a head coach. Um, and as an assistant, we beat Louisville in the second round um, to go to the Sweet 16. It was just a special year with special people. Uh, we had won the SEC title, so I, I would say that moment. All right. Uh, most memorable uh, – or most – I'm sorry, most influential person uh, to you as a player. And, and we brought uh, Dennis Emery up, and you shared uh, your, your – your yeah, I, I think – I mean, I don't know if it's corny, but one, my, my, my family, your, your parents go first – High school wise would be Red Amy. Coaching wise, uh, in college would be Dennis Emery. Gotcha. Most influential person to you as a as a coach? Uh, as a, my wife, <laughs> you know, I I, mean, I think she she coaches me half the time. Also, you know, I am sure we throw some ideas to our our, our 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 spouse. I think she's helped me a lot become a better coach. All right, we're gonna. Try to get a few favorites from you. Do you have a favorite book? Uh, I like finance. So I, the richest man in Babylon or the Dave Ramsey book early in my career. I, I read a lot of finance stuff. Do you have a favorite movie? Uh, I like battle movies. So uh, Braveheart, Rudy, thing that movies. Yeah, those are two of my, my favorite. Do you have a favorite tennis movie? 
Um, I don't love all those ten. The Break would be one of the the, the movies I like, kind of funny and and. Uh, but the Break, it's a the Break, it's a lot of votes. Yeah, I, I think like I saw Wimbledon for twenty minutes and it. I don't. I don't. It just bored me to death. So just didn't even watch it all. All right. Do you have a current show you're streaming? Uh, I just finished. I don't watch much shows, but when I do, I, I binge it. Uh, I stay up till two and watch it. Uh, Picky Binders was one. Uh, and I'm starting Outlander. Okay. All right. Hobby off the tennis court. Excuse me? What is your, you have any hobbies off the tennis court? Yeah, uh, like I said, I, I stock market, personal finance. I'm, I, 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 that's what I like. All right. First racket you ever picked up? Uh, a Kenex aluminum. Um, I don't know what the number was, but I could, I remember hitting on the ground and it was not, it was by the end of it, it was like this. <laughs> All right. Racket you used during college? Uh, I played with the head radical. All right. Racket that you used on tour? Same. I stayed with my head radical till the end of my career. Do you have a current racket of choice? Uh, yes. All the rackets that my players leave at the courts, I use. That's, that's the system I have. I just grab whatever. I just there. grab one. I, and see, like I told you, I don't play too much. Now, if I did, I think I would pick up two rackets that I like and stuff and pay attention to that. But I the feed to hit a couple balls. I grab whatever they forget. Okay. All right. All right. So what former college coach would you like to have dinner with? And we're going to remove Dennis because uh, I'm sure you guys have already had plenty of dinners together. Yes. I would love to, to, to meet and talk uh, with Coach Gould from Stanford. I think, you know, during our, our era, I mean, he was just a monster until, t t until he retired. Um, just the consistency of it. You know, like I told you, I love consistency. So just to be, to, to teach me a little bit about this, I, I'd say Coach Gould at Stanford. All right. Cedric, if you weren't a college tennis coach, what would you be doing? I'd be in New York in, in the stock market. Okay. All right, Cedric. Well, that's the, that's the end of our time together. Uh, I, once again, I want to uh, thank you for, uh, for, for spending this time with us and taking the time to uh, talk, talk with us here at College Tennis Talk. Thank you. It was really nice. And it's good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, take care, and we'll see each other soon enough. All right. Bye.